Last thing before we open Santa's presents. Right. Getting rid of your Christmas trees. Too soon? <laughs> An important factor, though. And now that you know about it, you'll have time to think about it. So the city of Idaho Falls, link in this post, has 15 mm -hmm. different collection sites scattered throughout the city for you to dispose of your Christmas tree. Mm -hmm. Do you remember Hans Christian Andersen's The Fir Tree? That I, whole story? Do I? That one I don't. He sort of anthropomorphizes a Christmas tree. Oh. And I think the whole moral of the story is the tree growing up mm -hmm. just wants to be grown up. Right. And then like any Hans Christian, Hans, I'm, I'm not saying, I'm doing the American bastardization Hans of his is name. Fine. Anyway, uh, like, like he's the guy that wrote The Little Mermaid. Oh, he was sad. Which has a way different ending than the Disney movie. Yeah. But... You know, basically the fir tree does finally get to be full grown. They chop him down. And while he's burning his firewood, reminisces about how he wishes he would have enjoyed his time as a growing fir tree. Oh, a little side note on Hans Christian Andersen. Yeah. First off, he was a sad, sad man who never found love and who always dreamed of it. And it was so sad. And also, if you saw his face, you'd get it. Oh, <laughs> I know. And also, sort of an Edgar Allan Poe type. Uh, Edgar Allan had some smokiness to him. I don't That's know what true. you mean. He was hot. He had a little snape going on. <laughs> yeah, he, had, yeah. he was the original yeah, emo. He had, he had some sex appeal. He was fine. Hans Christian did not. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> and apparently, there is actually a board game about what a terrible house guest Hans Christian Andersen was to Charles Dickens. Really? Yeah. Wow. Isn't that funny. Huh. Apparently. This is an actual thing that happened. He actually went to stay with Charles Dickens because he was a huge fan of his and was such an obnoxious, horrible fanboy that Charles Dickens hated him. Never let that guy in the house ever again. <laughs> right. And, wow. And now there's a board game about it, and I actually really want it. So maybe for my birthday. <laughs> and I saw, okay, all right, which is coming up in January. It is. It yeah, is exactly you, a month after you Christmas. You unfortunate child. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh no. January 25th, one yeah. of my favorite days of my life. You know, yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> For <at> two reasons. <laughs> at least it's not on Christmas, because I know some people yeah. who have Christmas birthdays, right. and it's like, oh, presents once a year, and that's it. At that point, Sorry, I would buddy. be like, <laughs> at that point, I would request a half birthday. Right. I'd like be in, like, can we just celebrate my own birthday? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I kind of thought about that. We're coming up on our six-month anniversary of this show, and mm -hmm. I, I really think we should sort of time adjust it, because we had been doing it for six weeks before. Right. But yeah, I think, I think our birthday should be like... June some June twenty fifth. Yeah, and then our six month anniversary should be December twenty. Basically, Christmas. Yeah, I love that. But I saw a debate online where somebody said, "Oh, Christmas trees are purely commercial. They never existed for any reason." Uh, no, eh, wrong. Incorrect, moon to my dude. So wrong. For as long as mankind has been able to exist in wintry weather, mm -hmm. so had the, the capability to make shelter and clothing. We've been bringing green things indoors. Yeah. That's not, Christmas trees are not a commercial construct. Yeah. Christmas not, trees are a hope for um, the sun to rise again yes. after three days mm -hmm. in the bleak midwinter. Christmas trees are actually based on the pagan tradition of decorating trees during the winter solstice, yeah. usually with things that were edible for the little critters. Oh, nice. Mm -hmm. So anyway, disposing of Christmas trees. <laughs> <laughs> uh, City of Idaho Falls has 15 locations. Link in this post. City of Ammon is doing something so much cooler. Mm -hmm. Dri in fact, even if you're in Idaho Falls, I bet, all you got to do is drive to the extreme west side of McCowan Park in Ammon and dump your Christmas tree there. Now, both Idaho Falls and Ammon are requesting that you take everything off of it first right, right. of course like a good citizen come yeah. on yeah come on we only want to burn dried dead organic plant matter only you can drop it off on the far west side of mccowan park in ammon because on january 20th at 6 p.m they're gonna burn them that and have a giant so bonfire such it's so cool right that it's sounds so, awesome you know they've got They've got the caution tape and the fire engines all around. It's a very responsible burning. Right. It's really cool to see. That sounds really cool. If you've ever thought, how cool would it be if I just kept my Christmas tree around until, you know, the end of January and then burnt it? Now you can find out. Watch that times a thousand. Yeah, <laughs> it's, yeah, yeah. It's really cool. We'll Absolutely. To, hopefully we can get some video of that when it happens. Oh, I can't wait. One other option to, to dispose of your trees that I saw comes from one Tessa Browning. She's a Girl Scout who wants to go on Girl Scout adventures. Mm -hmm. We've got her info up right here. She will. You 
message her with, and she's got her contact info, your address, the date and time, and you leave your Christmas tree out, she'll come pick it up and you pay what you think it's worth. Oh, I love that though. That's so sweet. How cool is that? Yeah. Great idea, enterprising young lady. Right. Now I, honestly, now I wish I didn't have an artificial tree. Yeah. I feel terrible. I wish I could help her out. I think you probably still could. I think her her Venmo info was in there. Oh, okay. Well, Mm -hmm. you know what? Maybe you're going to get a little freebie from me. How (laughs) about that, kid? That's right. No work required. All right. We're going to wrap it up with uh, Christmas presents. Santa came. Yes. We've been so disciplined this entire episode. We've been eyeballing him. We've been side-eyeing him. Here we go. Um, And, you know, I think that Santa took a little inspiration from one Whitney that has commented on many a thing. Oh, Uh, you think so? I do. I do. I think that you'll find that very intriguing. This feels like a poster. (laughs) What what does that feel like? (laughs) Um, Feels like a sweater. Oh. Oh. One, two, three, go. I guess go. we're going to find out. Okay, one, two, three, go. Okay. Oh, man. I'm. This seems so simple to unwrap. Oh, oh it's cats. <laughs> it's a little cute cat Christmas sweater. Okay, Get that's cute. Out. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I love it so much. Ah! Let's see. Meowy Christmas. With Leon Coco, my little kid. Meowy Catmas. Oh, I'm stupid. Sorry. <laughs> and it's got, yep, Leo and Coco. You've heard us talk about Leo and Coco. Here are some fairly- A very accurate de- depiction, I'd say. Fairly accurate <laughs> depictions of Leo and Coco. Leo's oh, a fat this. orange and white Coco's tabby. I giving the little side eye. <laughs> she is. <laughs> yeah, that's so her is the thing. Santa oh. really knows you. He really does. What a, what a guy. Man, it just makes me love him even more. <laughs> um, I think I know what this is. You know, I can you wear s- this with those socks that my mom gave me a couple of Christmases ago that have uh-huh. Rango's face on them, and then I'll have the trifecta. Okay. Now that is a Christmas fit. <laughs> this poster is pretty tight in this hole. You want some help? Oh, no, wait. I know. I just put two fingers in and ah. <laughs> gave it a little nope. twist. We're not doing it. We're not doing it. <laughs> We're not having another in and out episode. <laughs> no. Oh, this is what I think it is. Okay. <laughs> I want to adequately represent this on the show, so I'm going to actually walk away from the mic. Okay, that's fair. And Ooh la la. Look at that Cheryl Teagues. That, that is a Cheryl Teagues poster. You know, I will say, I don't really understand how they expected her, expected her to sell bras when she's got so little to fill them. Yeah, no, she, you know, <laughs> I guess I didn't realize how skinny of a mini. And that, you know, probably made her, you know, I, you probably don't want somebody falling out of your product. Okay, but hear me out. Really In the Sears what you catalog. Want, uh, here's what you, re- here's the thing. That's someone who doesn't technically need your product. What you need is someone who does need your product. Right. And the right size, no matter how, you know, how much is filling it, they won't fall out of. Uh, thank you, Santa. Yeah. Obviously, Santa listens to the show. <laughs> I guess he does. And listens to Whitney. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I- I'm just going to take a peek at the bottom here real quick. Yep, yeah. That's everything I figured it would be. <laughs> All right. You know, that'd be a great little uh, closet decoration. Yeah. <laughs> that would be a great... Like in Christmas Vacation, where he's got the poster above his bed. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Can't see the lines, can you, Russ? Funny. Well, wow. anyway. Anyway. Merry Christmas, Idaho Falls. Merry Christmas to you, Carly Morgan. Oh, Merry Christmas to you, Mike Nelson. Well, uh, Rango, your chihuahua, certainly is enjoying the excitement. He's yeah. deciding whether or not to beat these pieces of wrapping paper up. We're going to get a couple yard bags and clean all this up. <laughs> like you do for Christmas. And go have some eggnog and some of Kevin's mini Dickmans. Yes. Oh, I can't wait. 